In this lecture, we're going to take a look at the useful notion of an associative array. And uh, that name, associative array, that suggests that we're discussing arrays, but in fact, um, associative arrays are not arrays. Okay, I guess like red herrings are not herrings. Um, anyway, a, an associative array is something that is used in a manner that's similar to the way an array gets used, but which um, sort of under the hood is um, implemented very differently. Okay? Um, the other part of the topic, the other topic here, hash tables, is frankly a, um, a concrete way to implement associative arrays. It's by no means the only way to implement associative arrays. In fact, a lot of languages implement associative arrays using binary search trees. But here we're going to focus instead on hash tables. So again, associative arrays, while they're not arrays, um, they get used basically in a manner that's similar to an array. And, and in fact, the idea of indexing into an array, right, taking an array and then using square brackets and putting a number in, uh, and the number is an index, um, that's, that's what you're accustomed to f with arrays. Um, it's, it, it's really similar idea here with associative arrays. We index into an associative array. Um, however, it's, it's customary to refer to the index as a key. You can call it an index, but, but um, we'll be calling it a key. So we use a key to index into um, an array. Okay, as I said, the hash table is going to be a way that we're going to use to implement associative arrays. Okay, here we go. Suppose that you just uh, want to keep track of a few dozen student records. Okay, and what you'd like to do is look up the student records using a nine-digit student ID number. All right, well, one way to do that is, is something that we already discussed in the previous lecture. You can, you can hook up a, a binary search tree. Okay, it's certainly possible to hook up a binary search tree to keep student records and keep it sorted based on student ID numbers. Um, keep it organized that way. Well, that's fine. And, 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 you know, there are a lot of good things to be said about binary search trees. We've talked about them. We've talked about some of the negative, well, a negative aspect of binary search trees, um, namely the, the need to keep it balanced. Um, here we're going to focus on this problem of keeping student records organized by student ID numbers, but we're going to use a, a very different uh, um, data structure to do it, namely a hash table. Okay, so what I want you to imagine is the following absurd idea. One way you could keep track of the student records is to create an array that has room for one billion student record objects, okay? And then you could simply use the student ID number to index into that array to grab the, uh, you know, the correct student record, okay? So the student ID number would serve as an index into a monstrously large array. Is that a good idea? Um, I, I hope you, <laughs> I hope you immediately react that that's a terrible idea. Okay, the problem with it is that we're using an awful lot of space, one million times whatever the size of a student record is, um, in order to just store a few dozen student records. So yes, you know, those student records, yes, they would be stored in the array, but the rest of the array 
would be, uh, you know, empty or contain garbage. Okay, so that's that's a pretty good segue here for um, introducing the idea of an associative array. The associative array idea is that while you get to use it in a manner that's similar to an array, the way in which the data gets stored is not at all like an array. Okay, you would index into this um, associative array using a nine-digit number. Okay, you would basically, as a programmer, behave as if you were using this ridiculously large array of one billion um, student records. Okay, the index, as I've already mentioned, would be referred to as a key. The student ID number would be a key. Okay, and then whatever it is that, that you're looking up is referred to as the value um, that's associated with that key. So in my example, student ID number is a key, and the value would be the corresponding student record object. So how are we going to implement this idea so that we could basically, as programmers, use something that looks like it we're using an array, um, but which which avoids the wasted space of having a, a unnecessarily large array. Okay, um, turns out a hash table is a good way to implement this thing. Um, it's one of the most popular ways to implement associative arrays. Um, languages like Perl and a lot of scripting languages um, use this approach. So let's start developing a hash table for this student record example. Um, but let's actually begin with the with the ridiculous idea of, of using an array of one billion um, student records. Okay, so in that case, the nine-digit key would actually be an index into the this very very large array. Okay, now here's an alternative. What if we could take the nine-digit number, um, the key? and somehow convert it into an index, um, a smaller integer um, that we could use to index into a smaller array. That is essentially the idea of a hash table. How are we going to do this? There are lots and lots, um, lots of possibilities, and we're going to look at a few um, of these later. Um, right now, let's look at a really simple um, approach to um, converting a nine-digit key to a much smaller index to use into a much smaller array. Okay, simple idea is just to um, so just to simply use the last three digits of the student ID number. So the student ID number is nine digits long, and what we're going to do is, is focus in on only the last three of those digits, and those last three digits can then be used as index into, well, a much smaller array, right? You know, how small is that smaller array? Well, we're going to use three digits to index into that array so it's pretty clear that then we only need an array of size 1,000, okay? Well, an array of size 1,000, that's still, 1,000 is still a lot more than the number of student records that I'm imagining. I'm only imagining a few dozen student records. But nevertheless, 1,000, you know, is a lot smaller than a million. So maybe we can afford to, to be that wasteful. We could afford to have an array whose size is 1,000. Okay, so here's an example of how this so-called hashing 
would would happen. Okay. Um, so take a student, say, whose ID number is 214-365-879, and that key would then be hashed to the index 879, right? 879, the last three digits of the student ID number. And then we could use that index 879 to index into our array, and that would be the slot in the array where we'd expect to find that particular student's record. Okay? So the idea is very, very simple. Um, as I've already said, it is still a bit wasteful because um, in this approach there's going to be an array of 1,000 student records, whereas I'm only interested in keeping track of a few dozen students, so I would be wasting most of the array. Okay, but it's not as bad as before, right? We, we now have an array of a thousand records. Previously, we had an array of a, of a billion records. I think I might have misspoke and said a million before, but it would actually be a billion. Okay. Besides, you know, a little bit of waste, is there a bigger problem with this hashing strategy? And the answer is, well, yes, of course there is, because there's a possibility that two or more students might have ID numbers that have the same last three digits, okay? Every student has a unique ID number, but it's very possible that the last three uh, digits of the IDs might, uh, might be repeated among uh, several students, so in this hashing approach, that, that, that kind of thing is bad, and, and we refer to it as a collision. Um, it, it basically suggests that two students would somehow have to share the same slot in the actual array that's holding student records. And, of course, that's, that's a no-no. That's, that's not possible, okay? We can't have multiple students sharing the same um, slot in the array. Unless we alter the strategy a little bit. What if instead of having an array of a thousand student records, what if we changed this and made it an array of 1,000 pointers, and each of those pointers could point to a small data structure. The small data structure would be responsible for maintaining all of the student records that correspond to that position in the array, okay? All of the student records that get hashed to that particular um, index into the array, okay? Um, you know, if we don't have a lot of collisions, then we would just have, you know, a few students would have to, have to um, be maintained in some kind of data structure like this. Okay, a very simple example to make it concrete, we could, we could have, we could make the data structures linked list. Um, so to, to review what I'm saying here, instead of having an array of 1,000 student records, we would now have an array of 1,000 pointers, and each of those pointers would either be null, or it would be a pointer that points to um, the first node in a linked list of student records. Okay, we would still take the nine-digit student ID number, the key. We would still hash that down to a three-digit index into the array. Okay, but now that would lead us to a position in the array where we'd find a pointer, and that pointer would point to a linked list of student records, and the student that we're looking for would be presumably somewhere in that little linked list. Okay? And since we're, we're assuming that collisions is, you know, not too many collisions, um, we're assuming that each of these linked lists would be, you know, very small, and therefore um, it would not be very time-consuming to do a sequential search through um, these small linked lists. 
Uh, this combination of, of an array of pointers um, with, with these pointers pointing to little data structures, linked lists, say, um, of the actual data that, that we're trying to maintain, um, this whole combination is referred to as a hash table. Uh, the, the next slide is going to give us a visualization uh, of this example of student records um, that we've been discussing. Okay, so let's let's consider again a student whose ID number is two one four three six five eight seven nine. So as we said, that key would correspond to the uh, array index 879, we'd go into this array of pointers uh, at position 879, and there we'd find a pointer that points to the head of a linked list of student record objects. Okay, And if we go through that linked list of student record objects, um, we're going to bump into the student record that we want we're going to presume that the student ID number is maintained in, in that record so that we can identify it. So you see in this, in this picture, the second node in the linked list actually contains the record for the student that we're um, interested in. Well, there's nothing particularly special about the last three digits of the student ID number. Um, Maybe it's more random than the first three digits or something like that. But, but you know, we could use the first three digits or we could use the middle three digits or we might, you know, use the first and fifth and seventh digit, something like that. All of these um, provide um, different uh, hashing um, approaches. We'll speak of these as different hash functions. Okay. Um, yeah, we could we could take the first three digits and take the middle three digits and take the last three digits. We could take those and add them together. Add together three three-digit numbers, um, and that would give us a number that might be bigger than a thousand. But we could then, um, you know. Um, determine what that number is equal to modulo 1,000. In other words, what's the remainder if we divided 1,000 into it? Okay, in any case, all of these are just lots of different examples of how we could generate a three-digit um, index from a nine-digit key. Um, here's, here's how um, one of those approaches would work um, if we took the first three digits 214, the middle three digits 365, the last three digits 879. If we added those together, we'd get uh, 458. And then um, reading that modulo 1000, in other words, just, just taking the last three digits of that, we'd get, we'd get the index 458. Okay? So under this hashing scheme, um, the key 214365879 would get hashed to the index 458. Okay, so that, that is an example of a hash function. A hash function takes a key and converts it into an index into the array. And there's lots of different ways to um, come up with hash functions. Uh, choosing a good hash function is um, is something of an art, and um, different different data sets uh, with different keys might uh, benefit different uh, hash functions. We, we will not invest any time in the subtleties of this.